Hello, beautiful human. Thanks for clicking on our conversation with Alec Benjamin. He is beyond one of my favorite human beings, one of my favorite artists of all time. His latest body of work is one of my favorites. It's called Uncommentary. If you're catching this interview before it's released, I'm telling you, I'm begging you, pre-save the album. It's worth it. Or if you're joining this conversation after the album was put out into the world, listen to it again. You won't regret it. Link in the description below. And just a heads up, all of our interviews that end up here on YouTube first happen live on Amazon's brand new radio app. It's called AMP. If you want to hang out with us every day, link in the description below to download it. And while you're down there, leave your honest feedback on this conversation in the comment section. Hit like on the video and subscribe. Thanks. I appreciate you. Okay. Alec Benjamin, here we go. Hello, beautiful human. I am so excited because Alec Benjamin is here in the studio. Hello. Yo. Hey. <laughs> My first time in this new studio. Let's yeah, go. It is our temporary home. Our, our permanent studio is being built right now next door. Okay. And obviously come back to christen it. But it's, you know, we, we've kept the energy the same. The couch remains the same. The mics are the same. You know, pillows and stuff. Mm. Same energy, same vibe for okay. the most part. Very cool. This, yeah. Well, it's amazing. You don't wear headphones when you do the show. No. That's something that has always followed you. When you said come back to christen it, it made me think of like, I thought when you christen something, you pee on it. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I immediately thought of. I mean, if you want to pee on it. <laughs> no, I don't want to pee on it. That's actually like a really manly thing. Like, like that's a dominant thing. Yeah. Like, like when, I, when my dog wants to prove that he's like the coolest thing in yeah, the room, pee on things. Yeah, he pisses on it. Yeah, my, well, yes. <laughs> my, my 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 dog does that too but she's a girl dog but it doesn't but but you know don't you know any kind of dog can pee on things right. right. <laughs> come on it's 2022 <laughs> but she pees on everything so yeah I get it anyways moving on <laughs> we have a new album that's on the way have you released when like the date yeah, that's April coming 15th. very April. close to Coachella yep which you're also performing at? That was yes, that was intentional. I wanted it to come out like the beginning of this new touring cycle and everything. And I, you know, having put out an album uh, in the middle of the pandemic and not being able to tour it and all that stuff, I realized like, you know, I wanted to. It didn't. It didn't feel like a. I didn't have any closure, um, and it didn't really feel like a real release, you know. And I, I think part of the album process is getting to go out and play it for people and sort of, you know, get that feedback from people and see how it, see what the reaction is. And it was very hard to. To, yeah, it's coming out on April fifteenth. <laughs> it's called on commentary. <laughs> but, but but you're you're tapping into something really interesting. So like, is the, the, your full set? Have you even thought of a Coachella set list? And I'm assuming it's going to be mostly the new album. Yes, I have. We've been practicing for the last three, two and a half weeks or so, and then we have about another week of rehearsal. And then uh, I have a totally new band, which is awesome. Um, and uh, that's that's been great. Do you upgrade the band because the production on this new album is unlike anything I've heard you do before? That's cool to hear that. Um, I thank you. Some of the people that I played with before couldn't return, um, and so uh, and then yeah, we added some uh, elements to the band, and then actually my, the bass player and the drummer uh, were there from before. Oh, um, but, it's but your guy, right? Your friend. You've been friends Nathan, with Nathan. He doesn't play in the band anymore. He's Got it. he's he's doing his own thing for songwriting, which is awesome. Um, but uh, yeah, so that's why I'm afraid. I don't want to say like it was an upgrade. You know, because it's just it's just different. You know, it's like he's uh, he was amazing, and um, the new guy we have is amazing too. Uh, uh, but yeah, we have we have upgraded the set in terms of like I got a musical director, which oh, is sick. awesome, and I hadn't had that before. Also, in the past when I was performing live, I feel like I was trying to do everything at once. I was trying to write, I was trying to do promo, I was trying to perform, uh, and um, it I felt like I couldn't give a hundred percent of myself to anything. And this time, I have just really been focusing on you know making the album. That's done. Okay, now I'm gonna put the set together. So. It's going to be the songs um, from the past that I feel like people will, will want to hear who are fans of mine, and then also some of the new songs that I, I'm, I'm hoping that people enjoy. But it'll be a good mix of both, and, and a cool cover we've been working on. Ooh. Yes. It will be not Stan. Songs. Not Stan. No, 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 not Stan. This one, this one is, I, I won't say. Yeah, I want it to be a surprise. Cool. Yeah. That's... It's such great heights by the Postal Service. <laughs> yeah, I can't hold it in. <laughs> I love that song. Not really yet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Just gave it away that easily. <laughs> Nobody pressured. All right, if you're really gonna, you know, you're, if you're really gonna twist my arm, <laughs> um, yeah. But it's I'm excited about it. But we, you know, we haven't actually played. We haven't. Um, we we're playing. We've been rehearsing the set for like my headline shows, and then we have not. Uh, we haven't nailed down exactly what the Coachella set is. But I'm assuming it's going to be just like a refined version of whatever we're doing on the. Are you excited? 
Yeah, I'm excited. Hell yeah, I'm so excited. I'm like, this time around, I'm trying to keep a little bit more of an even keel and not like get like, you know, because the pandemic was a lot of ups and downs. And even before that, you know, you allow yourself to kind of like, you know, if you're going to allow yourself to get like really, really excited, then you also allow for the potential to be really disappointed. So I'm trying to just like sort of be a little bit more even keeled about it. By even keeled, like not set expectations? Yeah, I'm just trying to be more like just grateful that I have the opportunity. I think the yeah. pandemic really made me like, really made me realize how lucky I was, and also it gave me a good period to reflect on, um, just like I don't know. I just I took everything away, and then like you know for a little bit I was relieved because I was really tired, and then I started having dreams about being on the road and you know or doing an interview or whatever, and and uh, I remember I had a few dreams about like I put on a show and there was no one there, you know? And it's like, cause you know, I was gone for two years. Mm -hmm. So I just, I just feel grateful that people are still buying tickets and that I have, the, that I'm still on the bill. You know, I didn't even know if I was going to get rebooked for Coachella. Were those real dreams that you were having? Oh yeah. One of them was really weird though. Like, and I'm cutting out all of like the sort of like crazy stuff that didn't have anything to do with the dream. Like one of them, I got arrested and then like my tour manager came to pick me up and the concert was happening in the jail because that doesn't make any sense <laughs> you know what i mean they but, bring music <laughs> but, prison. but like yeah they were real dreams and and uh a lot of my f i feel like what happened with the pandemic changed things so radically that it was really dis difficult to grasp like consciously immediately and i feel like a lot of the feelings that i had that were underlying came to me uh in 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 ways that i wasn't expecting but so dreams being one of them it is fascinating because something that like everybody was going through and something that was really a shared experience for the most part, because like you say, you were gone for two years, but so was everybody else for the right, right? Well, in a kind way, of. I think I think that like people were better at navigating the uh, the digital landscape better than I was. Well, you know? it birthed a new era of celebrity. Yeah, it did. Yes, and and also, you know. Uh, it killed another, <laughs> no, not that I would consider myself in that class, but I feel like, you know, I just feel lucky that, um, especially like even a lot of my friends who were, you know, like some of my friends who were touring, who were in, um, in like metal bands and stuff from that I knew when I was young, you know, they were slotted to go on tour and a lot of them like couldn't, couldn't even afford to be a musician anymore. Uh. You know, they had to go get other jobs or whatever. So like, I feel just lucky that like I came out, uh, I'm out on the other side, you know, and that I can... I can still release a record, you know, like my, my barometer for what success is has changed. So what is it today? I think it's just like, if I can, if I can, if I can just still be doing this, you know, it's like, all right, like I'm on, just like get into the next round, you know, it's not, I'm not trying to I feel like when I first started, I would be like, oh man, I don't really care about like, you know, streams or whatever. And it's like, I don't like compare myself to other people. It's like, and I was, and I was trying, I was like trying to win whatever that means, you know, I realized like, you know, I'm not going to, and, uh, and, uh, at that point, you can either sort of, like, feel like you failed, or you can change your definition of what success is, and so that's so, what I've done, and I, that's how So what is your here. definition? Yeah, just if I'm able to, like, I can buy food, you know, like, I can buy food with my music, that's cool, yeah, that's, like, I, I don't, I, I'm not, uh, I don't have to get another job. But do you think the other stuff clouded the quality of art you were creating? I'm sh I'm sure I'm sure that it, you know I don't know if it clouded it but it definitely influenced it and a lot of the struggles that I was going through um just with like adjusting to touring and you know sort of releasing music and having it be like a like a sort of you know competition kind of like you know charts and streams and all that that definitely impacted my second album I was like super depressed and also like I would have this like compulsion I like every song I wrote I like wanted to be like perform you know commercially the best or better than the other one because I was like in the back of my head I was like oh I'm never gonna have a, another one that does this or another one that does this and it's like I, I just like I'm just not even thinking about that now not because it's not important to me but, but because it's like it's not gonna help you know when do you have that revelation is it before or after you start this album I think it was like a process but I think probably like the whole time through also this is the first album that I've made where I I wasn't like you know I, I Growing up, like, obviously, I loved John Mayer and Jason Mraz, and then, you know, you have uh, these singer-songwriters, and then, I, you know, Ed Sheeran came out, and I'm, like, I'm a huge fan of his, and then you see sort of, like, the astronomical success that he had, and it's like, oh, man, like, and not to say that John Mayer and Jason Mraz aren't, they're all successful, but you want to be, like, you're like, oh, I want to be in that class, and then, you know, I was listening to Ed Sheeran, he's like, you got to write a song every every day. And you and did. I did, yeah, and then I just burnt myself out, you know? <laughs> but, but, and, but you also, you started making music later in high school, right? Um, 
I did. Yeah, I did. Yeah. Forcing yourself to write a hundred a, a song every day for yeah. how many a year? I did. I did that for like a year or so, but then I found like on this last album that I did, I was like, you know what? Like, I'm not gonna write anything. And at the beginning of the pandemic, I didn't write anything for like six months or whatever, which is a long time for me to go without <laughs> writing a song. And I was like, I have nothing to say. And a lot of the time when I was writing before, I don't really have anything to say either. <laughs> and so sometimes, you know, I would I would be writing and I would, you know uncover something that maybe was hiding, you know, um, but I, like, really didn't have a whole lot of life experience to be drawing from. I feel like I had already sort of, like, the well was dry, and so in this one, I was like, I'm not going to do anything. I sat around. I read a lot. Uh, I was really depressed. I, I, uh, you know, I, I, I don't know. I can't, the whole time is a blur. I went on some bike rides. I. So how do you know it's time to start writing? I had something to say. I had some, for this album, I had something to say. So what was the first thing you had to say? I was watching sort of the world go kind of you know it was such a unprecedented thing that happened and um you know you can't rehearse how you're gonna like we you try to rehearse and prepare for those kinds of things but society wasn't really ready for it you know and uh it was had human nature on full unadulterated display and it was <laughs> true. fascinating and that's like you know that's what i wrote about with with the exception of a few songs um but uh yeah, that was like what this album is about, and that's why it's called Uncommentary because it's like it's my my commentary on what's going on, but it's it's uncommon in a sense that I feel like you know I kind of touched on some things that maybe were a little bit uncommon for me to talk about, uh, but things that I felt, and also maybe things people weren't saying, maybe were feeling, and uh, also it's uncommon in that like you know everybody has their own individual perspective, and so you know it's going to be unique if you're writing, you know it's like it's it's your own commentary from whoever's writing it because it's coming from your point of view and I can't I don't know what you know I can't write from someone else's perspective it's from mine when you're writing like are you actually physically is it you and a guitar is it you just with like a piece of paper so this one normally what will happen is and it's been a different process for a lot of it but like for different albums but a lot of time you know you have like a um sometimes you find like a team that you work with so if you're assigned to a label or a publishing company you guys know this mm -hmm. like you have some someone who's called an a and r and they'll they'll set you up with songwriting sessions in a studio and like you know encourage you to write but also to help find and foster new creative partnerships and uh normally i'll kind of just like be waiting you know to have sessions set up or whatever or like have my manager set them up and this time i was like i'm not doing anything i didn't tell anybody that i was writing i didn't tell the label management or whatever i just like would either sit down in the morning you know for an hour or two in the morning and write whatever i was feeling or i'd facetime like my friends but that i write with that i have a good relationship with and we just write a song like i would be like hey what are you doing you know and they're like oh, i'm not doing anything you know it's it's COVID, you know, I'd be like, all right, cool, like, let's, let's, like, write a song, and then i go for a bike ride, and I wrote everything over Zoom, which at first I thought was going to be an impediment, but actually, there's a lot of advantages to, like, being able to do things over Zoom, at least for me, I found. Well, you know what, I don't, I don't want to say that yet, because if the album comes out, and, and it's a, pr it's a flop, <laughs> not, even though I have a different definition of success, you know, <laughs> like, the Zoom maybe the Zoom sessions are not a thing that we're going to continue to do in the future, but um, for me, at least, it was nice, because it's like, I didn't have to f face the traffic, and then, like, you know, sometimes you go to a session, and you know, like, in the first 30 minutes, whether or not it's the right creative match, yeah. uh, and, but if you've driven all the way there, and the other person has driven all the way there, then you feel obligated to stay, Till the <laughs> evening, you know? <laughs> you know. How do you tell that it's a good creative match over Zoom? Well, I didn't have to do and, any random ones. Over yeah, you Zoom knew that. I already knew the people. That's great. But over Zoom, I had a couple of random ones set up for me, and uh, you can tell over Zoom because you can just tell. I mean, sometimes like you know, it's like maybe maybe you're not vibing with the with the ideas that the other person has, or they don't really like want to talk about what you want to talk about. Th there's a multitude of different different factors that play into it but what was the question no, how do just, i tell yeah. oh the cool thing about zoom is that i can say to them like hey you know what i actually like let's just let's just break and pick up another time and you don't have the you don't and you have never the, pick it up another time well you can <laughs> and, I, and i don't say that unless i really mean to because sometimes okay. the vibe the vibe is it's not that the person isn't right it's just not the right day yeah but you don't have the pressure of like you know you're at home like and they're at home and they didn't drive all the way to see you, you didn't drive all the way to see them so it's like it's okay. You don't you need can, to force something. You don't have to force it. And and this album I didn't force. I just made it because I wanted to. And then I sent the songs and I was like, this is it, you know. And then, you know, some some people, uh, they'll be like, oh, we want you to keep writing. And and I'm like, eh. <laughs> no thanks, <laughs> you know. Which is not something in the past that I've done because I was so afraid of, of, uh, of passing up an opportunity, you know. Because 
I, I, I felt like, and I still feel like this, but I was like, oh, I don't know when the next one is going to come. My, you know, might be, I might be done. You know, I, I want people, I don't want to say no to something because I want people to keep bringing me things because I, I love my job and I want to keep, keep doing these things. But I realized if like, you can't, if you burn yourself out, like you're, you know, there's future opportunities that you're going to ultimately have to turn mm -hmm. down. So I'm like trying to negotiate with the future so that I can like, yeah. I negotiate with the future so you can live the best possible <clears throat> present. Mm-hmm. But also churn out art that is the most true to you. Yeah. <clears throat> Free from oppression and so their aggression is worn like a badge on their sleeve. Mm -hmm. Dude, like I cried listening to this body work. I got goosebumps. I like that song. So you, thank you for saying that. You, Hill I Will Die On. It is clearly not about you, but about what you see around. Yeah, I wrote Society. That. Yes, oh, sorry. Did you? No. Okay, I'm going to cut you off. Sorry, I'm so excited <laughs> to see you. I'm just like, I feel like this is like... I really, you're like the only person that I talk to about this kind of stuff, and and I really like feel like I don't know. I just feel very comfortable talking to you guys, so I'm like excited to talk about this because I haven't thought about the record. That's one thing I've done purposely. It's just like I finished it, I put it away, and I didn't like you know. I got so worried that every song I wrote like wasn't gonna be a hit or whatever. I was like just sending like, is this one good? Is this one good? This one I was like, you know what? It is what it is. But that song in particular, I wrote around the time the protests and things were happening. Um, uh, in, in the U.S. and globally and stuff, and, and uh, it's not sort of like, I didn't, you know, it's not, I didn't get into any of that stuff, but what I was talking about was just like, especially during this time, the pandemic kind of like pushed people to, it kind of showed you, it, it really polarized society in such a way where it showed you what everyone's red line was, <laughs> you know? And everyone's got one, and we kind of figured out where they were, like how far you can push people, you know, on any given issue, um, and, and, you know, what they're willing to, uh, what they're willing to, where they're willing to negotiate and where they aren't and and so the song is just like well you know we have those lines and and in a few different ways i found that line you know like even in not even just politically like i remember my family i live with my mom and dad still still they're still, still trying to get me out and um <laughs> i uh i should move out i should move out. No. like i'm a full-grown adult it's weird it's totally weird um but i uh i i had like my my sister and my brother-in-law who I love, you know, they moved back, back in with us for a little bit because they didn't want to be alone during the pandemic. And that was great for about three months yeah. until it wasn't. And then we just yeah. had like, you know, a huge meltdown, you know, yeah. it, it like, you know, over something stupid, you know, and it was actually my fault. I caused it, but I was being so dumb. I just like, I was like, I'm dying on this hill. I picked it. I was like, <laughs> this is here where I'm going down, you know? And it's like, I feel like so many times, like it was over something so stupid too. I was totally wrong. But I decided that was the moment, you know, and I feel like that, yeah, that song was inspired by just, like, by that. In those moments, like, and especially during the pandemic with everything going on, the truth is so many people had literally nothing to lose. Like, we right. had no job. Right. Income was far and few between. Right. The, your daily motivations ceased to exist. Right. Yeah, So, yeah. like, in this moment, it's like, what the f*** do I got? And there's no end in sight. Right. In the record, you're, you're talking about what you see around you in society, but also, like, you draw back to this person who puts on a suit and tie mm -hmm. and essentially gets up and goes to die on a hill. Right, yeah. I remember there was this guy in Seattle who got shot or whatever and that was living in that autonomous zone. And you bring up, didn't you bring up Seattle? In yeah, that's what that was about. It was just like, you know, a person probably didn't know they were going to die that day. You also, like, when you're going to have, like, a huge meltdown, you know, it's like there's no sort of, like, lead up to it. They're like, hey, today, like, you're going to you're gonna have a breakdown. You know, it just kind of happens and you're, you're like, you're, you're going through it and you, you reach your, it's like you can, you hit that breaking point so quick and you don't know when it's going to come and you can't prepare for it, you know? And so it's like, whoever that was who got shot and died that day probably, you know, got up in the morning, whatever, got Normal on the bus, day. whatever, that was it, you know? And, um. That's scary. Are you afraid that your breaking point can come? Because now that's all I'm thinking about. Uh. Has it come? Well, I found there are certain issues, which we don't have to go into, that, like, I find that I don't have any room for compromise on, you know? Like, you know, for one one of them being, I don't like to share food at dinner, you know? What I mean? <laughs> <laughs> That's not one of them. I was, I was like, how do I, how do I say something that, like, what is, it, what is an area where I don't compromise Dude. that won't be offensive to anyone? It's, uh, don't get off my this plate. happened the other day. I went, I went to dinner with some people, and, uh, you know, I, I, ordered, uh, I ordered my, uh, my fried pickles, which are, like, that's that's my that's my shit, and uh, <laughs> that's the only thing I spent money on during the pandemic. I, I ordered fried pickles from Buffalo Wild Wings. It was Dude, so stupid. So good though. They're so good. It's it's Buffalo Wild Wings is so overpriced, but it was <laughs> it was worth it. And uh, the, someone was looking at my plate, and I know then I know they're gonna be like, "Why if I have one of those?" And I and I wanted to be like, 
yeah, yeah, mind. Like, yeah, but but I did. I didn't. I didn't die on the hill that day. But that is an issue that I will. That is a hill yeah. you die on. <laughs> if you want your own pickle fries, order your own pickle that, fries. I found myself out to dinner with people before where they just think that we're gonna share food, and I try to like give them like low key hints of like, you know, maybe you should get your own or yeah, like. Yeah, yeah. They don't. No, you got to be explicit about that. You yeah. just say I don't share food. Like, let's just not. Let's not. Do, let's not do this whole dance where where we, or 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 you have to go to a place that you're, like you have to go with people that you've gone out with before that you feel comfortable sharing food with because mm. there are those people like my family or like my close friends. You know, people that you feel comfortable like either ordering for them or letting them order for you. Then 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 wow. it's then it can be done. You know, you also have to be aware of how much you eat relative to how much the person you're totally. going with eats. You know, and how much they're willing to spend versus how you know what I mean. And it's then like, I also get very like insecure. You know, like am I gonna eat too much and now because right. we're sharing this plate they're documenting how much I'm You don't want to leave hungry. No. Yeah and you don't want to be worried that you're exactly yeah, yes. It's, it's too much. Uh, I agree. Too much. That's the hill I'll die <laughs> <on>. <laughs> Yeah. Your song titles are strategic. They are but also I had a bloody nose yesterday so if my nose starts bleeding again randomly oh. just let me know. I keep doing this but that's why. Okay. <laughs> okay. <All right. laughs> I want to know. Well, of course. Before it hits I'll my you know. sweater. Bad this is my sweater. I borrowed it. <laughs> From who? Nathan, my manager, is here, and I was at their office because it's close to here before uh, I got here, and it's one of the blank hoodies that they had, like, for merch options. But Sick. I'm not sure if they're going to want it back, so if I bleed on it, I'm probably going to have to buy it. <laughs> uh, Imagine I just let you bleed out your nose no, no, and no, it no, said no. nothing? Anyway, so the titles are strategic. They are strategic, and I do remember you had a realization about the strategic song titles around the mixtape. Oh, I tried to make a title that, you know, hadn't been used before. Kill Someone For You. Yes. That song ended up... I remember having this conversation with you. Because that, like, people were interested in the song title. The song is having a moment right now. Of course it Surprisingly, is. Surprisingly, you know. I, I'm finding that a lot of my songs, people will go back, and uh, a lot of my songs are, are being discovered now. Like, <clears throat> Let Me Down Slowly is, like, really big in India right now, you know? Like, and it, that was, song came out in 2018. And then, like, If if We Have Each Other had, like, a little moment, you so know? It's, good. it's fun. Yeah, it it's, it's cool to see. It's cool to see. Um, but I, there's a song on this record that actually... Didn't you have crazy titles? Get named properly. One of them's called De Niro. Oh yeah. It should be called If I'm Not De Niro. But the album was already printed by the time I realized the mistake was there. Oh. So How's that mistake happen? They send me things for approval, and I'm uh, being lazy or whatever, <laughs> and I say it's that's great, you know. <clears throat> and then I say after I call up Nathan, my manager, and I go, uh, "Hey, dude." Uh, it's not too late to, uh, you know, <laughs> it's like, he's like, everything is being printed right now, you know, but it, it's okay. Cause I find that those things like they work themselves out. Yeah. It's okay. De Niro is still a cool title. Are there any similarities creatively between your first mixtape and this album? Uh, I suppose I'm a common denominator. Yeah. <laughs> um, but, uh, similarities in, I mean, in what way? When you were writing the mixtape, were you writing with outside influence of charts and data and hits? Well, the good news is, is that. Well, not I don't know if this is good news, but this this one was like I, I was actually able to when I made my first mixtape cut out the world and not like look at stuff like I, I I wasn't even signed yet a lot for a lot of it and so I intentionally like made a conscious effort to like not look at the internet or whatever and during this one I just was like I'm not gonna look at anything because it's the pandemic and I don't you know I saw like everyone was quitting their jobs and I'm like. Fuck yeah, like same. <laughs> I, I don't want to do this, you know. Like I, I'm like I'm done for a minute. Like I'm, I got, I get it, you know. <laughs> so maybe there's something to that isolation. Yeah, I mean, I'm not. It wasn't great, you know. I'm not like I'm not. I'm not saying like oh, you know. Thank God the pandemic happened. It was it was it was a bad time. But uh, if there's a silver lining, it was it gave me like the space that I needed to just create freely and not really have to worry about you know. Also, the 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 thing that was really good is that like I tried for about six months. Um, you know, with no success to like, you know, uh, be a TikTok influencer and do all of those things. And uh, ultimately, you're pretty big on there, though. No, I suck at it. And ultimately, the world was like, stop, stop it. You know, I'm society friend. said, we don't yeah. want you here. And so I didn't have to shut out the internet. The internet shut me out completely. It was like, you're done here, which was great, you know, because I was like, all right, well, fuck it. I'm just going to, I'll just sit at my piano and do, do what, what you do, do best. What I, do what I like to do. Yeah. But what does that tell you? Just be um, yourself and do what it you tells do me, best. What does it tell? It tells me a lot of things, but I guess, well, I, I'll know more about, I, you know, it's funny. It's like, it's hard to, I don't know. It's hard to, it's hard to know ultimately how like the decisions and, and the art and stuff that I made during the pandemic, even though it was like, you know, 
a little bit ago, like how it's going to ultimately like affect my life in the future. But yeah, I don't know what I was going to say. I was trying to, I, I don't know what I was going to say. I was trying to like come up with something cool to say. And then I'm thinking to myself as I'm talking, like, oh, this isn't going anywhere. So. <laughs> well, yeah. going, going back to the social media thing, you did take a break from Instagram, at least posting for like five, six months, right? Yep. Yeah. What, what was the reason behind that? A lot of different reasons. This, there's a song on my album about it called Dopamine Addict. That's yeah. the, the album starts there. Yeah, it's about that. That's okay. So that's where it started. That's where I, that's where I stopped like everything for a while. Like, so I got like, I was, you know, yo, know, TikTok in specific and like Instagram too. It's like a slot machine, you mm -hmm. know, you have to keep like, you keep pulling it and pulling it and pulling it. It's very, mm -hmm. you know, it's very, uh, they, they do it, they do it on purpose. Um, I feel, but, uh, totally. I, oh yeah. It's all, yeah. I got crazy science. about it. I was like, you know, cause I had this album to promote and then I was like, well, what do I do? I can't tour. That's how I promoted my albums in the past. And, uh, it's like, well, I guess, you know, you know, you see like the, <laughs> I was like, all right, you know, sign me up. Let's go. Let's give this a shot, you know. <laughs> and I embarrassed myself. And uh, I uh, I tried then to, uh, yeah, I, I I threw my, I got so upset, I just threw my phone through the wall. I mean, that's one of the lyrics yeah, it of the is. song. And uh, I, I, uh, I didn't, uh, yeah, that I don't know where I was going with that either. I just said, was there a reason that you took six months off? And oh, like, yeah, it made me insane. It made yeah. me insane. Yeah, it, it, it made me crazy. Because you were being something that you, you're not. Right. Yes. I remember, like, one of the fir the first interview you came, and we I had met you and known you before. I looked at you. I was like, just keep. All you gotta do is be you, and yeah. everything else will fall into place. Mm -hmm. This album is, I think, your best body work ever. Well, and I'm not fucking around. Thank dude. you for saying that. It's I spectacular. It. Oh, thank you. That means a lot to me because it's the one that I. I don't know how to feel about it yet. I haven't really shared it with anyone. One of the first people that that's heard it, and I, uh, I. I just made it, and I didn't. Uh, I didn't set out with the intention of being like, "Well, I hope this is better than everything else I've ever done." I just wanted to make some songs, and that's what happened. What song started the album? The album process. Well, I wrote older like a long time ago, and it ended up resurfacing coming on the album. But the album process started with the song called "Nancy Got a Haircut." <laughs> Who's and Nancy? If you really want to know. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, okay. So there's a couple songs, without like. And, and, and really, I have, like, no... One thing that I realized, too, during this is that, like, issues and things are so complex that it's, like, it's hard to have, like, a real perspective on anything, which is what nuance is about. Mm. But I thought... I wrote a song called Nancy Got a Haircut, a song called Hypocrite, H-I-P, like, hip, you know, uh, instead of H-Y-P. I know how to spell. Some people being like, yo, like, do you not know that it's spelled wrong? I'm like, oh, I know. Um, but it's a... Uh, I don't know why I said it, like... Oh, I know. Like, I, <laughs> I know how to spell. Like, that's sexy, <laughs> ladies. <laughs> um, I, uh, I, I feel like I don't have really much of an opinion politically. But when people do things uh, and tell people to do things that they don't themselves do, it makes me sad. And I remember that my mom. One of the things about the pandemic that I feel like you know just really made me like. I remember my mom was like. Oh, I really wish I could get a haircut. You know, you take so many things for granted, mm -hmm. and um, you you don't you don't really realize consciously like how much of an impact it has on your on your outlook and how it makes you feel when you, you get a fresh haircut and you're like you're well groomed or whatever you take care of yourself changes everything. And uh, and and then Nancy Pelosi got a haircut, <laughs> and I was like Nancy, <laughs> come on man, like let my I want if you can get one I want my mom to get one you know. <laughs> And so that's what it's about. But but the song is also takes a perspective of like, oh, well, you know, but then again, like, you don't know what it's like to be somebody who's who's doing those things. So it's like, you know, it's not supposed to be like a huge, yeah, I'll leave it at that. Um, not, that I, not that I, I'm, I'm sure she's a really nice lady, but in the moment I was just like, that's what I was thinking about. So in the session. Yeah, why are you not me? Well, well, yeah, and also her, she was just on my mind, you know, and, and I was just like, oh, well, you don't want us to get one, so maybe, you know, you shouldn't. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you know, or you should. I don't know. No. Um, no. But by the way, if you're gonna set the rules, you gotta follow the rules. Well, that's how I feel. You know, I, I, and, and I, that should duh. be like sort of like a not a political thing. That's no, just, that's yeah. a life thing. Yeah. Um. But but uh, you know, if she, you know, she's watching that. <laughs> Sorry. Um. But then I wrote a song called Hypocrite. Um. Because you know, especially with social media, it became such a thing where it's like it's really fun and cool to stand stand for something. Um. But the way that you live your life and the things that you post online are two completely different things, yes. you know? And so that's what that's about. Uh, it's a, it's hip to be a hypocrite. You know? All these stubborn mules went to fancy school. But the only thing they learned to do is talk. It's yeah. so good. <laughs> yeah, like when Ted Cruz was like, the power grid went out in Texas and he was like, peace. Cancun. He, went, he went to Cancun. Yeah, like the 
all do it. You, it doesn't matter who you are on what side of the uh, what side of the aisle. You know, everyone trading stocks and things like that. You know, and like r- before the crash and everything. It's like, come on, guys. No, like, it's disgusting. I, I won't go that far. Well, I, I I will. I believe that one day there will be a an era of the selfless civil servant where people realize that good for your neighbor ultimately means good for you and your family. Well, not, not to say that, like, in some ways, they don't do things that are selfless because they do actually have a hard job and there is a lot of scrutiny. And, like, I get it. You know, everyone everyone has their own problems. These are just, like, you know, these are just sort of, like, I don't know. I feel like these are just sort of, like, isolated events that happened that during the pandemic really had an impact on me. And, um, you know, yeah, like, you know, Gavin Newsom doing his whole dinner oh, thing. in Napa? You know, yeah, it was like, ridiculous. Come on, like, I want to see my family, too, bro. Like... It, it, and- and if you're going to do that dinner, at least invite me, guys. Like, <laughs> <laughs> it looks delicious, you know? Um, but that's what those songs are about. Well, uh, so are you just watching things happen in the news and letting it marinate within you and then going? Are you keeping notes as things are happening? Like, what is... I think mentally, like, when something has an impact on you, you know, even if you're not sort of, like, jotting it down. It well, I try to jot things down if I have an idea. But um, normally what will happen is, is, like, there will be these things that happen to me, and for some reason they have such a deep impact on me that, like, they sort of like keep resurfacing in some way, you know, like I think about them or like I'll see a word like hypocrite and I'll be like, oh, and I make that connection. I'm like, hip, that's cool. I should make a play on that. And I'm like, I know a hypocrite, you know, <laughs> and then I write a song about it. And is this? Excuse me, I have to cough. <coughs> Thank you for excuse. It was really yeah, polite of you. Excused. You know, it's. You got to do the whole. The whole yeah, you got to. You follow the rules. I'm trying to. It's I'm really trying. impressive. I don't always. You know, I also have done those. I, I've done those things in the past too, where it's like you say something that's like. That's why when people ask me about certain things, I'm like, I always try to like be careful, like not to. And I don't want to preach because like I'm a hypocrite a lot of the time too. We all are. You mm-hmm. know, it's very cool. It's hip to be one. Anyways, this is fun. For the story that you're telling in hypocrite, what is what is the goal of it? What do you want me to walk away with after listening to it? Um, I haven't thought about that. What do I want you to walk away with? I don't know. Maybe if if you're someone who was also frustrated with some of the things that were happening during the pandemic, it will make you feel better to know that there were other people who also took note of that and sort of like it will make you less frustrated if you want to come to a concert and sing the song with me and we can get our anger out that way in a civilized way, you know, because people did some uncivilized crazy things, you know, and have done in the past and throughout history. And it's like this is music is a, is a good way to sort of like air out some of those frustrations. Um, also, uh, mm, what do I want you to get out of it? Well, you know, sometimes it's easy to feel bad about yourself um, when you're looking at, you know, sometimes the way other people live or, you know, the things that people are doing or saying and telling you to live. And it's like, you know, that's some of that is good because you have to learn and grow and you you have to be able to take criticism and stuff. But also you you have to understand that sometimes, you know, even the people that appear to be the most virtuous don't necessarily behave in accordance with the ideals that they're espousing, you know? Just because, I mean, you you talk about, you know, talking and acting and walking the walk. Yeah. You can say anything. Yeah, it's like, yeah, you you could be a winner with no skin in the game, you know? It's like, you, that's, it's true. Yeah, you can, yes, yeah. Really? We're all all at some point guilty of it, too, so I don't want to make it be like, you know, like, I'm I'm no moral authority on anything, you know? I just, like, I felt, I just saw, I saw what was happening, and I, and I thought, you know, there's probably a lot of people out there who'd like to get a haircut or have a dinner with some of their friends and family, you know, so. But you wrap it in such a really unique way. Yeah. Even the production on Nancy Got a Haircut. Well, I didn't produce it, so. But a guy that I work with named Sam Romans did, and that was one of the actual creative relationships that was new. That really? That was awesome. Yeah, I mean, you amazing ask, song. Yeah, so you asked, thank you. You asked me how I know if I if it's a bad one, I can tell you how I know if it's a good creative relationship, because <laughs> I was I was pissed off. I didn't want to write, because um, someone told me to do the session. I was like, okay, I'm going to do it. And, uh, you know, I was, I was in that zone where I was like, oh, I'm quitting my job. Like, I don't want to do anything. But they were like, trust me, this is a great guy to work with. And I FaceTimed him, and I was already kind of in a combative mood. And, uh... He was like, oh, so what about this? And I was like, what about, what about, I want to write a song. I was like, what about Nancy got a haircut? And he was like, that's awesome, you know? And I was like, okay, cool. And then when he was excited about it, I was excited about it. I ended up writing most of the album with him. <clears throat> wow. Yeah, so that was a good, I wrote Hypocrite with him too. What made that relationship, what did he understand? We were on the same, same wavelength. We just, we got each other and, and he he allowed me to, to say the things that I wanted to say. And, and not only did he just like, not only did he allow me to, he was excited about 
helping me. Um, and uh, also, he became a great friend. Like, we talked about a lot of these things that were going on in the world. And, and through those conversations, we would ultimately identify, you know, what we would want, what we were going to write about for that day. So we, sometimes we would talk for like two hours and then be like, okay, well, what should we, what should we write about? And then we write a song in 30 minutes, you know? Um, and so that's how a lot of those happened. Nancy got a haircut it's under two minutes. Is there a reason for the uh, length of some of these songs? Yeah, that's all I had to say. Just <laughs> that, <laughs> that, that was it. Long. I was done when I was done. It's two minutes long. You Do know? you throw out traditional song structure when you start this album? Did I? Did I? I, tr- I tried to throw out the structure that I had imposed on myself in pre in the previous albums uh and i was 60 percent successful in doing so was this a structure you you forced yourself in as early as the mixtape yes but the mixtape like i was like because that had some success and allowed me to tour and stuff i was like well i have to do that again you know i realized like that's not how it works so with nancy got a haircut i was like you know what i'm a, like i used to start with a verse of my songs and then i you know in the more pop school of songwriting it's like we're gonna start with the chorus but I was like, well, why can't I start with the verse? So I did for a lot of these songs. <laughs> and Water Fountain is an example of a song that yeah. I started with the verse. And Let Me Down Slowly is a song that I started with the chorus. By the way, two great songs in their own way. They're different. just different. Have you realized that you're never going to be able to duplicate what you had before? But, well, I have. Sorry. Oh, no, go ahead. You go first. No, you go first. I was going to say, why? <laughs> you, could, you could duplicate it. You don't know. One of these songs no, could. Yeah, but the truth is, like, I think what's duplicated is this idea that you didn't have outside interference. Right. Well, duplicated in what way? Like the success of it or duplicated in the way of like, I can't, what do you mean? Oh, you're going to have more successful songs. Maybe. Oh, maybe no. Not. I, I mean, I, what I'm, what I'm learning is, is that I'm, I don't know. I'm learning to be okay with whatever the outcome is because, um, worrying about it is not going to change it. So, you know, and I, and I, I feel like I knew that, but I didn't know that. And now I, you know, I really know that. I'm just like, whatever. You know? Do you feel like you set your expectations low, though, so you're not letting yourself down? Of course, yeah. <laughs> I do that all the time, you know. Um, but, like, I, I do, but now um, I have a different expectation because um, the bar for how low things can be uh, got really low during the pandemic. Yeah, I was just like, well, I'm, things could, I, everything could go away in, like, two seconds. You know, I could be totally, like, you know, there I am, like, complaining, like, oh, I'm so tired, I'm so tired about tour, and I don't know if I, blah, 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 and then it's all gone, and I'm like, well, I want it back, you know, and now I'm realizing, like, it could all be gone, so whatever. So I have to enjoy it. But I'm tr- but yes, also, too, like, setting your expectations low helps you not be disappointed, you know? Not in, like, a cynical way, but, yeah. <laughs> Speakers is a great song. Time Pass Like Cigarette. Turning into smoke between our fingers. I did that. That's a that song for me was very untraditional in the way I wrote it. I also started with a verse. The lyrics don't really make a hundred percent sense, but I was like, that's okay. Uh, they I mean they do, but like they're not like. I super thought it was beautiful. Literal. Thank you. I wrote that with a guy named Dan Wilson, who I wrote. I have been working with for since I was nineteen, so almost almost eight years. Um, and uh, yeah, I wrote that song the same way I wrote Water Fountain. What and about the song doesn't make sense to you in terms of the lyrics? I don't know why I said there's a rock inside my sock, you know. Like, but I just, <laughs> well, it felt it's a nuisance. Yeah, it felt, yeah, but it felt right, you know. It's like normally I would be like, nah, I can't put that line in there, but it felt right, you know. So, it makes sense. Yeah, and and time passed like a cigarette. I didn't say like t- normally I'd be like that's not grammatically correct, you know. But I was like, yeah, it feels right. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I'm loosening up a little bit, you know. <laughs> yeah. But see, like that, I feel like it, it comes through in the product truly, Thanks. and it, it, the art reflects. Uh, you also dissect a hammer in a way I've never heard somebody. Oh, Oh, thank you. Understand and dissect the fucking hammer before. Thank you. Yeah, that song is about, like, hammer in sort of like a metaphorical sense, but it could also be a literal sense, too. It's like, you know, sort of everyone has, like, a has a gift or, like, a tool, you know, and you can either you can either build something or you can break something. Um, sometimes making things is better, you know? I don't know. Yeah, that's what it's about. Do you still view each song as a story you're telling? Not really. Not always. I, I did, like, I had, like, a, you know, it's, like, you can only write so many songs where you make a character and then the chorus, before the chorus go, and he said, you know, and have the chorus be, you know, it's, like, so it's, like, because sometimes my songs are a little bit less storytelling, but it's, like, you know, tr- trust me, like, you don't want every song to be like that because it, it gets boring. You know, I'll go back to that at some point, and I did on a song or two in this album, but I think that, like, these songs in this album as a whole, it tells a story, and some of these songs are, are a story, but... 
no, I don't think about I, when I'm gonna write a story song. I'm like deliberately thinking about like this is gonna. I'm gonna tell this story, you know. Mixtape was featured yeah. a lot of those. Pr- pri- primarily story songs, um, but yeah, like it got old. It got old really fast, you know. It's like I had a lot of songs, you know. It's like and he said, you know, what like and this here's this character did this, and it's like okay, I did that, you know. When you were writing songs every day. Mm-hmm. Were you alternating the types of songs you were trying to write? I tried to, but you run out of ideas. You know, I'm, I don't have that many ideas, or at least like a lot of the ideas. All of the ideas I get, I get from my lived experience. You know, when your yeah. lived experience is being in a studio, you know, and trying to write a song, ultimately you start recycling the same things over and over and over again. Yeah, there's not much. I mean, that wasn't for me, you know, there wasn't for me, not enough for me to be excited about writing. It made me like really hate the process. I was like, oh, I have to go to the studio today. What am I going to talk about? You know, what does songwriting mean to you today? Mm, What does it mean to me? Songwriting. I'm trying to like do like the, you know, free association, like the Sigmund Freud thing. It's like you say a word and then you like have like a picture of like a thing. What do you see? (laughs) (laughs) What does it mean to me? Just like a black blob. What songwriting means to me uh, um, is uh, at least what I like to, because everybody who writes songs writes songs for a different purpose. But for me, ultimately, the songs are a vessel for um, uh, the uh, way that the things that I'm thinking about and um, my philosophies on life and the things that I've learned and like the ideas that I want to convey to people or like you know the questions that I want to pose. Like hammers is not necessarily like making a statement on something. It's just like you know everyone's got a hammer. What are you gonna do? Like what are you gonna do with yours? You know I haven't figured out what I'm gonna do with mine yet either. But like you know I tried to make an album. Yeah. So th- that's what songwriting means to me. But for some people, some people just love you know sort of like you know like you know a lot of music is not lyrical music and maybe it does convey a a message but not not as literally and so I'm trying to make my message and my music like more sort of oh no the the songwriters there are songs that I love and then there are artists that I love and I love and I have to crack my finger I'm sorry it's okay Uh, I'm like addicted to I've been doing it this whole time Finally, okay. There are songs that I love. Maybe that'll be good for YouTube though, because like you know, they're like I'm going. The YouTube ASMR. Are, I yeah. watch chiropractic videos all day. Go. Yeah. You ever guys? You ever see the guy? He's like, oh, crack addicts gonna love you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's the Y strap. Yeah, yeah, dude. <laughs> he looks like he's breaking their neck. Oh my gosh. Um, I I love those videos. So I good. watch pimple popping videos too. Uh, uh, I'm, I'm 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 so deep in it. You I know. Love it. Um, Is that what you're for? You do you still go on TikTok? No, I use YouTube for for those things. Okay. Um, but uh, when YouTube runs out of videos, because I've I've really I've <laughs> I've gone I've gone so deep, you know. I've had my favorite channels and stuff. I see if there's any sort of original TikTok content on back cracking and things like that, you know. Or or then you know I'll do shorts on YouTube, you know. So everyone has like some unique content. What were we talking about before though? I had something to say. I can't remember. Oh, uh, we. I have no <laughs> idea. Oh, about songs. <laughs> about songwriting. This there are songs that I love. And then there are songs that I love, and I also love the artists, too. Um, and um, when I gravitate towards an artist, it's because I like their ethos. You know, I like what they stand for. Mm. Um, and so um, for me, like when I was growing up, I had a lot of things that I wanted to say, and, and I and I like to read, and I like to, to just talk. But, you know, people don't want to listen to me just talk because I was annoying. Uh, and so I was like, well, if I could sing, you know, maybe people will listen. And if I could sneak my ideas into these songs, then, you know, maybe I got a shot at sort of like, you know, influencing the world, getting my voice heard. That's really interesting. Yeah. You really thought that, that nobody wanted to speak to you? I, well, I was very an- annoying, and I was would say stupid things, you know, which ultimately I think is like, that's how you learn, you know? People correct you, and then you go, oh, you know, on second thought, that was kind of a dumb thing, you know? But, but yeah, I, I lost friends by, like, offending people and saying things that I shouldn't have said, you know? Not intentionally. Were you being honest? I was honestly trying to have a conversation, you know? Um, sometimes when you're... Well, honest in what way? I mean, it's like, was I being, was I really being honest with myself and the things I was, I don't know if I was being honest, but I would, you know, you talk about a subject or something that people are uncomfortable with and it's like, read the room, you know, and I couldn't, you know, and it's like, oh, you're not getting invited to that party, you know? (laughs) (laughs) So I was like, you know, maybe I can, maybe I'll get invited back to the party if I make music. How's that working out? Uh, Have you got invited back to the party? I haven't been to a party in a long time. We was talking about more of a metaphorical party, but <laughs> no, I still don't get invited to parties. <laughs> do you feel like the hero of the zeros? Mm. Getting back to the lyrics? Okay, yeah, that's about, that's, okay, yes. Uh, no, but I'm trying to be. That song is about, like, me sort of, like, you know, like I said, I was like, oh, man, I would, it would be, it'd be great to, like, you know, be Ed Sheeran playing a, a stadium by myself, but, like, it doesn't look like that's in the cards for me, you know? Maybe one day it will be, who knows, but. I, because, uh, you know, you do that thing where you're like, okay, well, at this age, this person who 
this was on the path that I have hoped to be on to this. And you're like, mm, missed the mark there, missed the mark there. And it's like, okay, well, if I'm not going to be De Niro, then like, I might as well, if I get the, if I get, you know, if I'm, if I'm the supporting role or whatever, or if I'm holding the door, I'm an extra, like, I'm going to just be the best at that because that's all I can do. You know, I can't like, you don't get to pick the role that you're given. So you just have to play the role the best that you can play it. You can come into any show and steal the show. I, I want to be the one the fans adore, not the one holding the door. That is, yeah. I was gonna say you're selling out shows around the world on the day your 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 tour goes on sale. Sure, yeah, but um, you know, like, there's always people that you, and and yeah, you're right, and I should be uh, I should be grateful for that, and that's one thing that I realized that I wasn't grateful enough for. Like, I need to be like, oh, this is so cool, what I have, you know, and enjoy it. Um, at the same time, though, I'm always like. You know, it's one of the things I was struggling with before. It's like, you know, yeah, but then you look at Billie Eilish and you're like, oh, I'd love that. You know, a little little bit of that would be nice. You know? Yeah, but <laughs> how like, many people are looking at your career being like, well, that'd be nice. Right. You know, a perspective is healthy. Um, but uh, when I was writing this song, I was just thinking about, I don't know. I was thinking about, well, if I don't get to a place that I'm ultimately satisfied with, which I should be satisfied already, you know, um, then uh, then I'm just, I don't know, I'm just going to, if I don't accomplish my goals, then ultimately, like, whatever my role is, is in life, uh, I'm just going to play that role the best that I can play it. But yeah, you're right. I. <laughs> you're right. Whatever that role is in life, you're going to play it to the best of your ability, but also, it... it, it... To say that you're not going to be, you, you, it's not in the cards for you to accomplish that stuff. Mm. You're talking down about what you've accomplished already and where you can go. You've already like, yeah, I don't mean to. Come you've already cast that. yourself out of the game. Uh, yeah, I have. I, <laughs> yeah, I, I, I don't know. You haven't been playing the game for that long. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I, I, I guess I don't know. No, I'm I know hard what on you myself, mean, but I always want more. You know, it's like that's that's a flaw. It's a flaw of mine. I have because we have this show and we do problem. very well on this show. But I always look at some other shows. I'm like, why aren't we doing what they're doing? Right. So I completely understand what you're saying. Right. About the that. comparison is a kiss of death. And if you, whenever for, for all the moments you're focusing on somebody else, that could be moments you're focusing on your art and your own craft. Right. And in right. bettering your own product. Right. And sometimes you're focusing on other people and it compels you to write a song about it. So yeah. <laughs> There's a third. <laughs> um, but yeah, you're right. But but at that time, I sort of, with without that, having had that healthy dose of perspective, that's how I felt. I was yeah. like, well, because I don't feel like with where I'm at, you know, I don't have any reason to be like, yes, I made it, you know? Like, I, I don't feel that way at all. Like, I, and, and there's no reason why I should, you know? But at the same time, there are things that I get to do that are really cool mm -hmm. um, and I should be happy about. But also, it's still just the beginning. Yeah. I, and it's I hard to realize that and remember Yeah, that. it doesn't feel like it. It doesn't feel like. I mean, it. does getting older scare you? You kind of talk about that on the album too. It, yeah, getting older is is, is it, well, I'm I'm older now. You know, I am. It's I'm here. You know, it's scary. <laughs> I'm scared. Yeah. <laughs> You're 28. I'm gonna be 28. I turned 28 in about a month and a half. I'm there. It sucks. You're, are you 28? Yeah, it's terrifying. Okay. All right. Well, how's it, how's it feel over there? Yeah, the worst. <laughs> Stay right, away. Well, I'll, I'll be joining you in about a month and a half. <laughs> so. I'll be counting down. I'm 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 a. Uh, yeah, I'm not ready for it, but it's like no one's ready for it. But I'm the, I'm there, so it's like. But there are some cool things to it. Like, um, the other night I I did a TV show um, where I got to perform, which is cool. Um, and I can't say which one it was because um, it's not it's not it hasn't aired yet. Um, but uh, it was one that my family always wanted to go to, and I got to take my family there. And then afterwards, um, like you know, the bill came for dinner, and I like I got to buy my family dinner. You know, that was cool. That's rad. Like, before, mm -hmm. like, you know, I was, like, couldn't buy myself a sandwich. And now, like, I could buy my family dinner. Like, that was cool. I got to, like, do that. You know, my, my parents have, when I was younger and, like, growing up, you know, they would take my sister and I out for dinner or whatever or take us to a fun night. And, like, they did that for us. And it's, like, you know, I still have a long ways to go in terms of paying it back to my family for everything that they've given me. But, like, to be able to start was, like, really nice. You, you would travel with your parents every weekend to go do shows. You did, like, over 100 shows in a span of six months. And... Right, but, you know, I, they didn't come to a lot of those. Well, those ones I did, like, it was, is that that's when I'm getting started or when I was touring? When you were, no, back in the day when you just got started. Oh, yeah, but I was living at home, so. But they didn't come to a lot of those. So I was playing in parking lots. But then, like, <laughs> they come to shows now and stuff. But, like, yeah, it's fun to do. It, that's fun, you know? I'm trying to enjoy those things. It's like, I, my my parents get to see me play or like get to be a part of this experience and my sister and my brother-in-law and my friends it's cool you brought up a situation where you couldn't buy a sandwich and that is a story that you've told where you, you 
were questioning whether or not music was for you, right? Mm. You're crying at this deli because you couldn't yeah. even uh, you couldn't like, oh. you you could not <laughs> buy a sandwich. Yeah. Now you can buy your. Uh, as ma- it was you nice. Can buy, to buy a lot of sandwiches. Oh, I could, I could, I could buy them for my, I could buy my, my family dinner. That was cool. That was cool. Like I, that, I like that. You know, that was really rad. Um, so like that's how I knew that I was able to like when I could first like buy a sandwich with my songs. Like that was like okay, this is this can work. And then when I knew that I'm old, it's when I bought my family <laughs> dinner. <laughs> but I was like, but I, but I can feel. I feel like I'm an adult, and I can, I can be in. I, I, I'm, I'm coming into my own as an adult. Mm-hmm. You know, I can assume some of the responsibilities that I need to assume. There's things that I need to work on still, but like things I'm doing that like uh, are adult things to do that are very weird to to do. But I'm doing them. It's scary. Uh, it's fine if you do, but like, why do you still live with your parents? Because I'm a baby. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, if you, you want to know why, yeah. because I have uh, I have ADD. Uh, if you couldn't tell, it's hard for me to focus. <laughs> and uh, I try to limit the amount of things in my life that I have going on and that I have to focus on, so that I can focus on the on the on the few things that need my attention. Gotcha. Um, and so, you know, having to worry about monthly, you know, like bills and and you know like all the uh, while i did get to buy my parents dinner like i eat their groceries every day you know <laughs> it's like so it's like <laughs> a small dent and you know like i still have a long ways to go like i said but <clears throat> I, there's less things that i have to focus on because like i can't even you know like i i forgot to like I, I didn't even get up on time this morning to like get down to la to like you know there's like i can't i'm it's so hard for me to focus that like but but now i'm realizing you know I, I need to it's time. I gotta. I gotta. I have to figure these things. out. Have you Not thought about them. like? Do you see a doctor for the ADD? I, I have severe ADHD. Yes, it's I do. Bad. I do. I and? do. And she told me it's it's time to start being an adult. <laughs> <laughs> I used to take Adderall growing up. Started when I was nine years old. Went until I was twenty. Stopped for a while. Life got hectic. I try to just to talk pick it up. to her and help her. Like she'll like help me schedule things and stuff like that. Like I don't. I try to just like, like she'll tell me like. Um, what did she tell me? She told me, uh, oh, she told me something that was good. See, this is my ADD. <laughs> like, and then it's like, but by the way, like so much in life, it, so many other, you know, mental stuff is connected to ADD, ADHD that I didn't know. Cause I, I, I stopped taking care of my ADD for years and then mm-hmm. I started going to a specialist and then I got better and then I stopped again. And it's like, there's a lot of things, like a lot of things that I was unaware of in my actions that were actually a result of. Well, also, though, some of it, I feel like, is what makes you so good at what you, yeah, you know? That is, thank, thank, um, thank and, you. And sometimes I feel like the random things that come into my head are what, it's what inspires songs. Yeah, so and you I'm don't want to stop it. I'm trying to sort of, like, uh, walk the line between managing it and also, like, making sure that I don't change the person that I am. Yes. Uh, and also, um, yeah, I don't know. I had someone else to say, but I can't remember. Anyways. <laughs> About the album, <laughs> what else? What, are there any other songs you like? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the album is called Un... Uncommentary. That's it. Yes. My Uncommon Commentary. Uncommentary. Yeah. Pre-save link uh, in the description, or if you want to listen to it, you know, if you're catching this after it's released, link in the description. Coachella's exciting. Yeah, that's going to be great. I'm thrilled. You have a tour on sale. Link in the description below. I do, yeah, link in the description. Uh, the tour is going to be awesome. Um, the Europe tour is going to be great. Uh, the U.S. spring tour is going to be awesome. A bunch of markets I've never played. So I'm going to the places that I haven't been before. Um, yeah. I love your Mandarin. Oh, you do? Thank yeah, you. Yeah. Is older. Shady. You did older in. I did. So good. I did the way you felt in Chinese as well. <laughs> I'm just trying. I'm trying it out. It's trying a new thing. I'm trying to step out of my comfort zone. I, uh, I did a lot of, uh, I also did the water fountain. I did a collaboration with, uh, um, a uh, an artist, a uh, Chinese artist named Jia Lu Si. She's like speaks uh, Chinese, but she's like a mo- Chinese movie star. And I, I wasn't aware of her before, but I went on uh, Weibo, which is a yeah, that's a, the a Chinese. Chinese app. Yeah, and um, I saw she was like talking about my music, and I was like, oh, it's so cool. And I clicked, and she's like so famous. You know, I was like, rad. You know, like <laughs> let's, let's collab. Are you, you know? a social media star in in China? I mean, it's it's hard to tell because my my language skills are not great. So it's like it's not like especially when reading too. It's like hard to know, you know. What? Also, understanding the nuance of a language that you're not n- naturally, you know, you're not that you don't speak naturally, um, it, it is very difficult. So, uh, basically, no. 
<laughs> I'm not in anything in China, but it was cool That's... to do a collaboration. Or you just don't know. I was trying to say that I don't know to like main like like sort of like keep the mystique about it. Like maybe people would be like, oh well, he's really big in China, you know. But I, I don't believe that I am. <laughs> it would be nice to be. <laughs> um, yeah. So you only know enough Mandarin to get to the songs, or could you have a conversation? I. My 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 skills in terms of like conversational Chinese are like very rudimentary, but I could talk about like I can sort of like express myself, and it's been a long time since I've studied it. Um, but I know enough to sort of be able to to sing my songs, uh, and uh, I I hope you know we'll see like what the reaction ultimately is. But when you're crafting music, are you intentional when it comes to like the the key that you put your voice in? Because like some songs you sing higher mm. than others. Mm. Like, is that calculated? Is that strategic? How do you determine, like, well, what you do with your vocals? High, I bring the key down. <laughs> and, then, and, then, and then, and if not, I keep it in the original key that it came into my head at. Okay, so it, it's based on the way it enters. It. Yeah. And what you I was hear. talking to someone. I, so I went to my vocal doctor this morning. She puts, like, the scope in my throat, looks right. at my vocal cords, and I was talking to her. I was like, how crazy is it? Have I talked for too long, by the way? No. Okay, okay. I was like, how crazy is it? That's what I've been thinking this whole time. Like, maybe I said too much. Like, I was like, maybe maybe someone has to go to the bathroom. Or maybe I should stop talking. <laughs> but I was like, no. how crazy? You look at your vocal cords. Like, how crazy is it that, like, our, how crazy is the human body, you know, that we can we can control our anatomy in such a way that, like, something that you hear in your head, that you, you can make your cords vibrate, you know. That, exactly. And you could sing it. And then I was thinking about, I watched this thing on, uh, on YouTube the other day about there's a thing called acquired savant syndrome. Have you heard about that? No. It's like if you people who have gotten who've had traumatic brain injury all of a sudden become sort of like uh, a genius. A, at a genius in a certain area. And like I was watching this video of this guy who uh, was trying to catch a football at the age of forty, fell in the pool, hit his head. A few days later, woke up when he got out of the hospital, went home and just went to the pi- or went to his friend's house, went to the piano started playing like a, like a virtuoso and he was like I see these things I see these shapes in my head and I'm my my hands are trying to catch all the shapes and that's how you know it works and I was it got me thinking about like how I think about music like when I when I sing and stuff and yeah I don't know what this what the relevance to this is but, but what do you so see cool. how, how, I, I don't see anything actually I'm a completely auditory person so I I uh, I just I I know where certain frequencies resonate in my head in terms of like you know where I have to put my tongue in the roof of my mouth or like you know like certain sounds or frequencies like are on this side of my head as opposed to this one or at the top or or like in my chest and um when I hear songs I feel them in that place where they would resonate if I were to recreate that sound. So That's when you have head. an idea, you feel it to where the key needs to be? I feel it in my head, yeah. Like, I can, like, because, and that's also, like, that's that's where the position that I need to get my vocal cords in to hit that note. So, like, when I'm writing a song or whatever, I, like, it's sort of like, it's like a vibe, you know? It's it really, it's a vibe, dude. <laughs> 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 album comes out five days before 420 <laughs> um, but yeah I just want to like really understand this so like you know that you can control your voice based on different parts of your head and your chest right like wherever it resonates you know okay so like but when you have an idea for a song and I'm you, hearing it in my head first you're hearing in your head but you're hearing it at first I'm, fe- I'm hearing it like at least the way I, it's hard to articulate it's, it's actually hard to even know how I'm hearing, cause I don't, I feel like a lot of this is not happening consciously. When I hear it, a melody, like, okay, I'm hearing like, like, I hear it in the place first where I would, like, I feel it, and then I'm just catching those, you know? So where you feel it is based on the the, 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 the range that you're going to sing it in. Or where, where, wherever it would normally resonate in my head. At least that's what I think. I don't really know. I just started thinking about this. So it's cool. I'm not really like I'm not really like I don't know what I'm talking about. I mean, you're just sharing your. I remember your last time when we talked, I was like in a really dark place. I was like, you know, I was like, I was tra- contemplating the entire universe, and I was like, I'm <laughs> such an idiot. Like I was like, I was in a dark spot in my life. I'm definitely able to reflect on a lot of things I did, like just before the pandemic and during the pandemic. Where I'm like, oh, dude. are you talking about the, the that last whole time? album rollout? Like I, I which one? Two windows. It's just it's a I, it's a dark weird place in my life. You know. We, and uh, <laughs> I don't know how I feel about it, and uh, that's all I'll say about that. We can it pretend was, like it didn't happen. Yeah, I. W- w- sorry. I said we can pretend like it didn't happen. Y- you know, oh, I mean, I, it's on our YouTube channel. Yeah, it's, at a certain Wait, point, I'll, I'll. Yeah, come he to came terms. on. He was like talking about the universe and how. Every- Some of the things I was saying though were like they were not wrong. They were fascinating. But like I literally thought like I was like, 
oh my god, like you know, like you know, in uh, in in that movie uh, Twenty One or whatever, the numbers are flying around his head. <laughs> Um, yeah. I should go to Vegas with this shit, you know, <laughs> be a rich man. <laughs> but, 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 um, that was such yeah. like a millennial reference. That, oh, that, that yeah, that, that movie. It's a Kevin Spacey movie where they count cards. Right. Isn't that crazy? Winner, winner, chicken dinner. We're not like the youngest generation anymore. No, not I mean, at we're all. We're old. Gen yeah. Z, Generation Alpha is coming after them. Yeah, it's weird. Like, I'm not like a, I'm not, yeah, I'm old. I'm yeah. weird, you know, but. I gotta be where the kids are, dude. But I feel like I gotta I'm stay always... young. What? I gotta stay young. Age is just a number. You, you know, know <laughs> I have this friend, he's 21, and they'll say to me, it's all in your head. Age is just in your head. It's how you feel, not, you know, mm. not the number. Yeah, I'm I like, agree. that's, what? I agree. Yeah, but not, because eventually you're gonna have to whip out your ID, and everybody's gonna realize that you're not, you know, you're old. Well, that, I feel like in certain parts of my, of my life, or like when I was younger, like, I f- I'm like sometimes I f- there are certain things that when I'm thinking about it, I'm like oh I kind of feel like old but then there are certain parts of me where I'm like I'm living at home I'm like still a baby you know it's like it's like so I'm I feel like I'm one foot in and one foot you know I'm like kind of you know where you stand on a state line you're in one state you're in both territories yeah I'm in both territories at once Spe- I the line. <laughs> speaking of getting old I don't understand gaming I don't understand streaming mm. but how was it working with Dream it was awesome it was a very um, it was a very interesting experience for me, um, collaborating with someone. Especially we did it, we did it like uh, electronically too. Okay. So, and uh, I mean, it was it was really fun. I uh, we sort of like you know talked on the phone a bunch and figured out a way to to work together, and it, it came together really organically because he um, was a fan of my music, and he the first time he had ever. S- sang anything it was on one of his live streams and he sang jesus in la and uh it and i was like oh that's so cool and i started digging into like who is this kid and i realized like the whoa like this is such the, this huge internet culture mm-hmm. around around uh, minecraft and also like him you know and um so then i was like oh well i started listening to his music i realized he makes music and then uh i was like well we should just make a song together so that's how that's how that went jesus- i've been in the process of trying to get him to Perform a Coachella with me, but we'll see. Oh, what? We'll see. Who knows? It? Who knows? Oh, that'd Sick. be awesome. That would be cool. That would what break does he need? the internet. What does he need? What, what, what are you going to send him a helicopter? I'm what he needs is a lot of um, a lot of annoying text messages from me asking him to come play at Coachella <laughs> with me. <laughs> because if that's what he needs, then he's going to get it. Has know? he ever made like a public appearance, though? I don't believe so. <sighs> that'd be yeah. big. But maybe he has with his mask on. You know, I'm not fully, I'm not aware I don't know. Wow. I don't. I don't know much about the, the the gaming community. Although I did get into video games over the pandemic in a way that I've never been into them before. Would you play Call of Duty oh, all the time? Classic. Yeah, like I, there would be times where I would sit on the couch at like noon, and then I didn't know how long I'd been sitting there, and then all of a sudden the sun was coming up <laughs> for the next day. I was like, oh my god! I've been. Would here you play on live with people? Yeah. Yeah, I did. Yes, I did. I Yell did. at anybody? I mean, not really. You know. Only when it was called for. People are, like, normally, like, pretty nice to you, like, in the game. Like, sometimes people, like, talk smack and stuff, but, like, whatever. Did you and Dream game together? I, you know what? I never followed up on it. He was totally open to, like, having me um, play Minecraft with him. I downloaded Minecraft, and I and I couldn't figure it out, so, yeah. <laughs> I never understood it. It's, I, it's a whole, I'm you sure build. maybe at some point I'll get into it. You build. That's you all build. I know. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's just such a weird process, because, like, you usually you could zoom with someone or meet them in person, but it's just you're you're writing a song with someone that you really can't connect with, right? So, how well, was it easy to connect with him over just like texting or just the phone? Well, we we didn't Facetime. I've never seen his. That's face. what I mean. Just, yeah. like, just voice. Yeah. Well, that's okay. I'm an auditory person anyway. That's true. So it's yeah. like that's why uh, that's why I like the zooms kind of stuff or phone works for yeah. me. So I we just talked about it and like you know we kind of threw ideas back and forth and you know he's not like he he doesn't have a ton of experience but he has. Some, he has natural ability like he's he has a good voice and he's learned how to use it and he, he can write lyrics and stuff and so we kind of just like you know we use each other as sounding boards and the song that we ended up with is the song that we ended up with it's a great song thank you you released a couple songs pre this album yes I did was it three well, the I ones really that are not on the album separate from that mm. like you did uh... a song called Shadow of Mine but that's on the album that's on the album what was the one it was blue artwork oh Eyes Blue Like the Atlantic no what Oh, Six bunch. Feet Apart? No, that after that. Song. I was listening to it a bunch and I couldn't because it was reminding me of my friend that I ended up hating and I don't talk to him anymore. Fair enough. I yeah. was. I think I don't know what you're talking about. Oh my God, I told you about it. it. That's the last time we spoke and we now were both I know depressed. how it ended. I was going to ask you. <laughs> <the way> you <laughs> <know>? <laughs> 
It's a long story. The way you felt? Yeah, the way you felt. Well, oh, that's on the album. Is it? Yeah, it's going to be. The f- Why was I didn't feel like that was Oh, yeah, it's on there. That's okay. I've... It came out honestly, it came out like 18 months ago, so Yeah, that was the song. Or not 18 months, maybe 18 months ago, I don't know. I don't know. Could be Change my clothes. But it doesn't really feel I, I get because it, it like in here's the thing. We yeah, were hoping that touring and stuff was gonna start like way sooner. Um and so like, you know, we initially started like the album rollout not prematurely, but it felt like an appropriate time because Omicron hadn't hit yet and we had touring lined up and then, you know, that happened and it changed. So some that single feels like oddly spaced out in time. We're gonna listen to it in a second, but okay. Uncommon Terry is the album. Mm-hmm. We're gonna share pre save links. In the description, or if you're catching this afterwards, the album's out. There's gonna be a, li- a link to listen. Uh, God, do you, have you figured out the story you're telling top to bottom with this thing? Do you, like, do you know what it is? Answer. We'll have the answer to that when we come back. After this. <laughs> 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 I think so. I don't know. I'm trying to think. Do I know the story that I'm telling? Can I answer it after the song? Please? Sure. I also want to talk about Devil Doesn't Bargain. Okay. Um, okay. All right, all right. I get like Illuminati energy from that. How much? Okay, wait, hang on. How much time do we have between now and when the songs play? Because maybe I can come up with an answer to that question <laughs> before then. You can take all the time you need. Uh, oh, let's see. Um, what is the story that I'm trying to tell with this with this album? Um, <laughs> well, I guess it's just my commentary on a lot of things that were going on, you know, at the time that I wrote the album, which happened to be, you know, like sort of like beginning of 21, um, and uh, you know, I really want to be what I aspire to be is I want to be the artist that I listen to. Uh, or the artists that I'm a fan of are like Bob Dylan, Paul Simon, um, I love John Mayer, um, I love Billy Joel, I love Leonard Cohen, and they're not just people who write songs for the love of music itself, but um, they have uh, their own unique philosophy on life, and uh, I want to, you know, one day, um, I, I, I aspire to be like them, you know, I, I their songs to me are, are uh, are not just, it's not just like a, they're not just something you would party to or whatever they're like, they really make you think. And so what I ultimately want to do is I would like, I would like to do the same thing. It's like, just ask questions and make people think and ask questions. And I don't know if I'll ever get there, but that's my goal. Whether you want to believe you're there or not, you are. And I'm telling well, you it's not for me to say. It's for cultures and society and, that's and where everybody I want, else. That's too. where I want to go. You know, that's who, who, that's who I want to be, you know. I feel like those are kind of the people, like, you know, they're, they're sort of like they're more like philosophers and stuff like that, or or like they're just thinkers. You know, I think about stuff all the time, and I I love to think about things and 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 you know talk and and try to like just figure things out and 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 uh, so this is how I sort of like um, monetize it, turn my thoughts into a into a product so that I can live and get know. people to listen to you. Yeah, because they wouldn't listen to you any other way. Right, right, and I have to you know I have to pay bills and stuff like that. If I did, well, technically your parents need to pay the bills. True. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know. Um, but but you know, at a certain point, you know, I, I like there are things that I have. To, I have obligations and stuff, and I have to, you know. So, but if I didn't, you know, I would just sit in my room and like read and think about stuff and talk, you know, talk to talk to my friends and be like, hey, I had this crazy idea, you know. But instead, you put it into music and art, and you share it with the world, and uh, very grateful. Like you, you know that I consider you not only one of my all time favorite artists, but Thank I you. do genuinely with every fiber of my being. Definitely believe that you are one of the greatest songwriters and voices of a generation. Oh. I mean that. Like, no fucking around. Well, that's an awesome compliment. Uh, one that I, it's like, I even feel like, I don't feel like, I'm like, oh, man, I'm a, I don't, I, can't, I feel uncomfortable accepting it, but I'll gladly accept it. <laughs> <a compliment. laughs> but I like to say I'm a voice in a generation, actually. <laughs> but, 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 but truly, like, this album fueled my sentiment. Like it, it strengthened it. This is an incredible body of work, top Thanks. to bottom. It is so creative, so original, and I mean, again, like I got goosebumps. I cried. I thought, like I, I felt every range of emotion listening to this. Cool. And I haven't felt that way since your mixtape. And okay, your mixtape is my favorite body of work of all time. Oh, I listened. Well, thank to, you. I, really, truly. Thank you. Like, well, you're. You you guys are my favorite people to talk to in general. Like you ask the best questions, and I can tell that what you're saying is is sincere, and it means a lot to me. And all of the interviews that you guys do are amazing. So that's why I love coming here. 
No, I, I, I love talking to you. Like even if you know, I, we 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 have the same conversation even if none of the <laughs> microphones or whatever. You well, know? we had it's a just... slightly different conversation before. Yeah. Well, did we? Yeah. Oh yeah. Well, why? I don't remember this. Oh yeah. Well, hey. Uh, yeah. I know what you're talking about. You know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Well, I talked about peeing on things at the beginning, and <laughs> so it's not like you know they got they got some crazy stuff too that you know some R-rated stuff. I was. I want to ask one more question. <laughs> when did you finish the album, and why haven't you listened to it since you finished it? Uh, I finished it. Well, I suppose like it's a finish is like you know when when was I done writing the songs? Yeah. Let me look. Oh, I don't have my. Phone. Because you said you haven't listened to the album. Yeah. Since it was finished. I was lying. I've listened <laughs> to it, but I haven't. I haven't thought about. I haven't thought about it like. What is this good or not? Like, and I've and I've refrained from like trying to get validation from other people as much as I used to. I did it too much. It was annoying as well. Annoyed myself with it. Um, but I I I um, when did I finish it? About like six months ago or something like that. I don't know when was the, yeah about at, at the. About um, yeah about six seven months ago or something like that yeah, and I've I've written a few songs here and there since when I felt compelled to do so. Or had you know a session scheduled and 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 was obligated to go and and ultimately those ended up being great so I'm happy that I was but uh, so will you just keep them for what I have a couple of songs actually that I finished for the record that I'm gonna put out after the album oh cool uh, there'll be a few songs coming after the record too are you still not sharing songs with other artists like would you you have so many songs I am trying to be less annoying about it <laughs> um, but I you know what I I I, st- I was very uh, uh, I was very uh, in like my process is very insular. I like really, you know, I didn't, uh, yeah, but you could go through your, your hard drive and never talk to another artist ever and shop songs and never have to be in the studio with anybody and never right? You have yeah. so, such great records I, that I will could, never see well, the light of day thank you. with I, your voice. I, I'm committed to this album. I gotta, yeah. I gotta, I gotta, now I made it and now I have to figure out how I best present it to people. And so that's a whole thing in itself. It's like that requires a lot of TLC too. It's like now I gotta focus on the live set. How do I, how do I show this to people? Um, because some people are gonna be hearing it for the first time or they're gonna, they maybe wanna experience it in a way that they didn't experience it on the record. And I, and also I, people haven't seen me for two years. Um, and so, some of the people who are gonna buy tickets have, they, they tweeted me and they were like, yo, I've been waiting four years for you to come to, you know, wherever, and it's like, okay, like, we got to be good. Also, like, people struggled, you know? They're going to spend their hard-earned yeah, money on right. my show. Mm-hmm. Like, this is a big deal. People, they save, dude. P- people are struggling right now. Yeah. And, and if they're going to come to my concert, then I got to do a good job. I have to I have to make it, I have, I have to try my best. I can't, like, you know, ultimately, like, th- things happen, you know? Some, you know, we put on a good live show. You should come see it. <laughs> yeah. But like, I have to do my best. I cannot. I can't disappoint people. They're, they've put. They've gone through too much, you know. And they're and and they're not only investing their time, but their hard earned money, um, which is cool. How do you step it up? I'm. I. You know. You have was, the band. In the band, past, I didn't know what I was doing really. Like, and I still don't know what I'm doing. But I. I I'm. Well, um, my management is awesome, and they work with a lot of. Uh, of 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 bands who've toured and also have like they pay they pay really close attention to detail and they've set up my calendar in such a way where it's like okay you got to know that like cuz sometimes you know I had a couple of times where I was going on tour and it's like oh shit like I got to rehearse like yeah. what's my set look like and like when when we started working together they were like all right this is what your calendar is going to look like you're going to be rehearsing for a month and you need a month and a half for this and you got to do this and you got to do that and i'm like okay great this is what i need so that i can deliver the product that i need to deliver um and uh what was the question <laughs> <laughs> what was the question not you answer oh how am i making sure this time yeah. i'm not i'm not i'm i'm done the album is in the past now i'll write new songs but like i i've said what i wanted to say and now i'm focused on i'm fully focused on my live show and then I'll be focused on the rollout of the album because like in the past I've spread myself too thin and 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 I I really spread myself too thin on my second record and uh, I feel like I wasn't able to give 100% of myself to anything you've given 100% of yourself to this album I try I'm excited to see it come to life thanks I will be going to Coachella oh yeah I'm forcing go. myself upon you let's go hang out with me hell yeah I'm looking forward to it I didn't know you're gonna go I've never been oh me neither <laughs> It's going to be awesome. My family's going to be there. <laughs> it's going to be fun. You know, I pre-COVID, I remember very vividly being in San Diego and watching your set with your parents Okay. at the Del Mar Festival. Oh, Kaboo yeah. Kaboo or some shit. Kaboo, yeah. yeah Kaboo. Wow. wow. Dude. Was that the last time you saw me play? Oh, I don't know. Maybe. Maybe. 
Oh my, I hope we have not. come a long way. No, I've seen you. I any any time you. I went to both your dates at the L. Ray. Oh yeah, that's right. Okay, we've come a long way since then, though. And then and then did you do a, another show after? I don't Fonda. know. Whenever you're in, yeah, the I Fonda. went to the Fonda. But we we've come a long way since then. I really we've we've improved so much. I've also been spending every day for the last five months. I play guitar like about four or five hours a day. Wow. Yeah, I got so like, it's a muscle. Well, it's becoming one. There are some people who, you know, people have dedicated, you know, 20, 30, 40 years to playing guitar. I've got a long way to go, but I'm uh, I'm pretty invested in it. Like, a lot of times I've started and stopped and started and stopped. This time, every day I practice. Like, I want to get better. Um, and so, you know, who knows how far I'll get, but... Is that daily ritual thing connected to a little bit of OCD? Because, like, you did the same thing for sure OCD. Uh, yeah, oh, it's for sure OCD. But I'm also, like, that right now is helping me whenever I've worry about something that I can't control or I'm comparing myself to someone else or whatever. I'm like, oh, you know, it'd be better if I just played, if I invested this energy in like getting better at something, improving myself as opposed to just like worrying about what other people are doing. That's know? healthy. Yeah. Some, I mean, it's healthier it's than healthier. comparing yourself. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's healthier yeah. than comparison. Yeah. By far. Wow. Uncommon Terry is the album. Uh, you are really genuinely one of my favorite people to walk this earth. Well, the feeling is mutual. Not that I'm one of my favorite people. <laughs> you are, and you, you are. <laughs> Do you have any thoughts, Daniel? No, I just want to say the album's great. Oh, it, thank you it so really much. Is. I appreciate it. Yep. I'm, I'm, I'm really grateful that I have the opportunity to continue to do what I like to do. And uh, this time, I feel like in the past, I've gone through it and I've been worried. And, and while I'm still apprehensive about the future, I'm going to really enjoy it this time, mm-hmm. no matter what. Like, I, I, this is so, it's so fun. It's going to be so much fun. This is so cool. I'm having a great time right now. The first time I ever watched you play was in a coffee shop in Santa Monica to maybe 30 people. Mm, oh, that was a good show. It was a great <laughs> show. Yeah. And there was some like random homeless a, guy like with a tambourine or was, something. Was one of the, yes, I remember that. That was I gave away a squash. Yeah. That was one of my first – that was like the one of the first times I ever had people come to a show um, that – you not included, because I had some family and friends, but there were people who showed up who genuinely didn't know me. Yeah. It was so cool. I had put, tweeted, and I had prepared for it. I were, I Actually, you know what? I, I had said, like, oh, I just put out a tweet, but really I had, like, got an email list. I was, like, reaching. I was, like, you're going to be there, right? You know, and I didn't know if anyone was going to come. And there were, yeah, there were, like, 30 or 40 people there. It was so cool. It was awesome. It was so cool. It was so much fun. Then you went to the Roxy after that? Yeah. That was fun, too. God. That was very funny. You gave away a little foot that I gave you that day. I did, yeah, I did. Yeah. <laughs> I haven't done giveaways in a long time, but uh, I mean, we're giving away vibes now. <laughs> <laughs> it's a different kind of gift. <laughs> but but now like I'm just gonna like I'm just you know I just I'm just happy that I get to keep doing it. It's so so fun. How cool is that? You can keep doing it for as long as you want to do it, and I, I promise so. you, people will come and see your show no matter what. And also after this album, I uh, just just strap on in, my friend. Please. Oh, well. Listen to Uncommentary. Yeah, please listen to it. Uncommentary, April 15th. It's going to be really cool. <laughs> Anything else you want to say? And if you have any information uh, re- re- relating or related to UFOs, um, uh, hit me up privately on Instagram. Because sometimes there's people who are listening to, like, I want to know, like, people who have information. I got way deep into UFOs. And, okay, this is, like, a weird thing to say. Oh, sorry. I accidentally hit the mic. It's okay. But, um, yeah, I- I'm like, I don't know. Never mind. Let's, let's move on. I'm starting, I'm starting to think aliens aren't real. No, don't say that. Yeah, for the longest time I was like, "There's got to be something out there," but recently I'm like, "I don't, Why? I don't know." What changed? I feel like we would have found something. There would have been some sort of evidence. There's just nothing. And I think well, Alex here that's, say that but that's there what. Is. So what I'm saying is, is like, you never know who's listening, who's tuned in, and maybe there was, maybe there's someone out. If I put the feelers out there, they'll feel compelled to share some information with me. And I feel like I haven't found enough information, but I think it exists. That's all I'll say. But yeah, and I. That's I don't know why I felt like saying that, but I, I really want to know. It's one. It's a question that's really been on my mind. I really want to know if aliens exist, and I feel like there's someone out there that knows. And there's and you've already watched through everything on YouTube on it. What you've already watched through everything on YouTube yes, I on have, it. Yeah, but I feel like there's a possibility there could maybe be someone listening today who if, knows something that I don't know. I was just the first thing that came to my mind. No, it's really it's, it's now actually, I feel uh, now I'm uh, I'm like embarrassed. No, let, me ask, <laughs> let me ask you one alien question, then we can wrap this up. Since you've, did, since you've done a lot of research, they're always looking for planets where there's water to find life, but what makes you think that aliens need water or oxygen to live? What makes me think that? Not you, that, but like, why do people think you need water to find life on other planet, planets? Well, I think it's just based on like what we see around us, because almost well, everything that's living, whether it's a plant or like an algae or a fish or a raccoon, they all need... The common thread is that we need some well, form of oxygen. just then assuming aliens are like us, and I don't know if that's true. Well... You don't have to answer that. It's not a question. It's just a comment. 
So this is why I was trying to put the feelers out there. Sometimes <laughs> you never know. You know what I mean? There are some people who think about this stuff or who know some shit. And, and they're just keeping you know, it themselves. So, you know, that's why. You asked me if there's anything I want people to know. It's not related to the album. But, like, if you know some shit about UFOs, it, let me know. <laughs> okay. But uh, wait, why do I think that they no, no, not water? <laughs> just forget I said that. Now, now I got myself thinking about weird things. All right. And I think that's... Yeah, that's the point. I want to make people ask questions. That's it. Uh, we've accomplished it. You really make people think. Oh, yo, I wish that part wasn't live. It's, I was, that was so, <laughs> sometimes things in your head, you know, you think they're going to come out and be funny or, like, be interesting, and it was, like, so lame. You just got to like, be why yourself. Would you ask, why would you ask about UFOs? Wow, the, oh, shit, I'm so embarrassed now. No, the, <laughs> no, no, and, no, no. And the no, question no, I no, ask no. you is, were <laughs> you living your truth in that moment? I was. That's all that matters. All right. Alec Benjamin, everybody. Right. Hey, thank you. <laughs> what a fun time. Thanks, guys. <laughs>